when the world says you give up hope whispers try it one more time how remarkable perhaps hope is what differentiates us from other creatures and gets us going when going gets tough according to wikipedia hope is an optimistic state of mind that is based on an expectation of positive outcomes so hope as it stands for have only positive expectations is the most potent source of purpose in life and one great function with a purpose in mathematics and more so in life is the modulus function a modulus function is unfused with the purpose of making everything positive in life if you are a positive number feel free to enter modulus operator you'll still remain positive and if you are a negative number just put up a big grin as modulus function will beam you to a positive state in no time and if you happen to be zero well then you have nothing to lose my friend oscar wilde once remarked that some cause happiness wherever they go others whenever they go if you don't fancy being the latter then your life should be just like the modulus function in maths doesn't matter what value is entered just always yield the positive value so be modulus and be positive so today we'll discuss modulus function now modulus function is again one of the very important functions in mathematics now mod function is defined as fx equals mod of x now it means when x is less than 0 i can write it as minus x and when x is greater than equal to 0 i'll write it as plus x so typically a modulus function is written as mod of x and when x is negative it is minus x and when x is positive it is plus x now say for example mod of minus 2 is now x is negative so i can write minus of minus 2 which will be plus 2 and mod of plus 2 because x is greater than 0 now mod of x is simply x now if i have to draw the graph of modulus function so what i'll do is i'll draw the axis Now, when x is less than zero, it's a straight line y equals minus x. So I'll draw this line. And when x is greater than zero, again it's a straight line which is y equal to x. So that is the graph of modulus function. So modulus function is basically a V-shaped graph. So this is how we can draw the graph of modulus function. Now we'll come on to properties of modulus function. So the first property that we come across is: What if I have mod of x equals to a now depending on this a suppose a is a negative number now modulus function can only take positive values so if mod x equals to a when a is less than 0 in this case we will have no solution now say for example if i'll get mod x equals minus 2 so modulus function cannot take a negative value so in this case i'll say there is no solution to this equation and if A is a positive number. In that case, simply x is equal to plus or minus a. Say for example, if I get mod x equals to two, then x is plus or minus two. So clearly, mod of two is two, and mod of minus two is also two. So when mod x is equal to two, then x equals plus or minus two. So if a is less than zero, no solution. And if a is positive, then x is plus or minus a. Say for example. It says solve mod of x square minus mod of x minus two equals zero. Now it's a quadratic in modulus function. So what I'll do is I'll let mod x equals y. So y square minus y minus two equals to zero. So if I factorize, I'll get y minus two, y plus one equals to zero. So I can also write it as either y is two or y is minus 1 now y is mod of x so i'll write it as mod of x is either 2 or mod of x is minus 1 now mod x equals 2 then x is plus or minus 2 and mod x equals to minus 1 now mod this function cannot take a negative value so in this case i'll get no solution so answer to this question is the value of x should be either plus 2 or minus 2 now the second property in modulus function says mod of x is same as mod of 
minus x. So basically mod of 2 and mod of minus 2, they'll give the same value, which is 2. So mod of x is same as mod of minus x. Also, in some cases, when I have, suppose mod of x square, mod of x square is same as x square. Because x square is a positive number. Now x square is same as mod of x square. Now the third property is mod of x into y is same as mod x into mod y. And fourth one is also, the fourth one is mod of x upon y is same as mod x upon mod y. And in the properties, mod of x to the power n is same as mod x to the power n. These are very simple and self-explanatory properties. So what I'll do is, I'll take an example. Say for example, I need to find sum of real roots of the equation So which is x minus 2 whole square minus mod of 2 minus x minus 6 equals 0. Now I can write x square as mod of x square and mod of x to the power n I can also write it as mod x to the power n. So basically what I'll do is I'll write x plus 2 whole square as mod of x minus 2 square. Now minus mod of minus x is same as mod of plus x. So I'll write mod of 2 minus x as mod of x minus 2 and then minus 6 equals 0. So now what I'll do is I'll let mod of x minus 2 as y. So I'll write it as y square minus y minus 6 equals to 0, which is a quadratic equation. So if I solve this quadratic equation, I'll get y as either plus 3 or y equals minus 2. So I'll put the value of y. The value of y is mod of x minus 2. So mod of x minus 2 is either 3 or mod of x minus 2 is minus 2. Now mod x equals to a when a is positive. So I'll get x minus 2 as plus or minus 3 and mod of x equals to minus a. Then there'll be no solution to it. So if I take plus sign, I'll get x minus 2 equals 3. Value of x will be 5. And if I take minus sign, I can write x minus 2 as minus 3 value of x will be minus 1. Now the sum of all real roots of this equation is 5 minus 1 is 4. So sum of all real roots, it will be 4. So that is the answer to this question. Now the sixth property of modulus functions is under root of x square is equal to mod of x. Now, because it is a positive square root, it cannot take a negative value. So, under root of x square is not x. Under root of x square is simply mod of x. It's a very simple fundamental, but then at times students, they do goof up in, in some questions. So, there's a question in limits, which is limit x tends to 0. Under root of 2, 1 minus cos 2x upon x. Now, in this case, I'll identify the form. If I put x is 0, cos 0 is 1. So, which is 0 upon 0 form, which is an indeterminate form. Now, what I'll do is... I'll use the formula for cos 2x, so which is limit x tends to 0 under root of 2, 1 minus, and this is 1 minus 2 sine square x by x. So I can write it as limit x tends to 0 under root of 4 sine square x by x. Now I can write it as limit x tends to 0. So this is 2 and under root of sine square x is simply mod sine x, so which is mod sine x by x. So now if I solve this question taking left hand limit and right hand limit, so left hand limit of this question will be minus 2 and right hand limit of this function will be plus 2. So in this case, answer to this limit is limit does not exist. If I don't take this modulus sign, then I'll get this answer as to which is obviously incorrect. So simply under root of x square is mod of x. So the seventh property in modulus functions is properties of inequalities. Now mod of x plus y is always less than or equal to mod x plus mod y. And mod of x minus y is always greater than mod of x minus mod of y. Now say for example, suppose I say x is 3 and y is minus 2. Now what is mod x plus y? Mod x plus y is 3 minus 2 which is 1. What is mod x? Mod x is 3. 
What is mod y? Mod y is 2. So 1 is obviously less than 3 plus 2, which is 5. Again, what is x minus y? x minus y is 5. And then greater than mod x 3 minus mod of y, which is 2, which is 1. So 5 is greater than 1. So mod of x plus y is always less than or equal to mod x plus mod y. And mod of x minus y is always greater than or equal to mod x minus mod y. Now, in this case, the important question is, suppose I get this condition, which is mod of x plus y is equal to mod x plus mod y or mod of x minus y equals mod of x minus mod of y. So generally we get an inequality sign, but we may have some question where mod of x plus y is equal to mod x plus mod y or mod x minus y is equal to mod x minus mod y. Now this is only possible when x and y, they are the same sign. So that is either both of them when they are positive or when both of them they are negative. So in this case, the condition will be x into y should be greater than or equal to zero. So say for example, a question is given as mod of x square minus 4x plus 9 plus 2x minus 3 is equal to mod of x square plus 4x plus 9 and plus mod of 2x minus 3, which is mod x plus y is same as mod x plus mod y. So in this case, the only condition I'll get is x into y should be greater than or equal to zero. So I can write as x square plus 4x plus 9 into 2x minus 3 and it should be greater than or equal to zero. So now I need to solve this inequality. Inequalities we have already discussed in previous lectures. Now for this quadratic expression part, now for this one, what is the value of d? Value of d is d is minus 20 and a is 1. So when d is less than 0 and a is greater than 0, this quadratic equation is always positive. So in my inequality, if there is any expression that doesn't change sign, I'll remove the expression from the inequality, keeping the sign. So in this case, the answer to this question will be 2x minus 3 should be greater than or equal to 0, x should be greater than or equal to 3 by 2. I'll take up another example. So the question is, solve this, mod of x minus 2 plus mod of x minus 7 equals 5. Now, what I do know is if I'll subtract x minus 2 from x minus 7 and if I'll take mod, I'll get this value as 5. I can write this equation as mod of x minus 2. Now, mod of x is same as mod of minus x. So, I can write it as 7 minus x and I can write it as x minus 2 plus 7 minus x, which is 5. So, in this case, again, this is mod x plus mod y equals mod of x plus y. So, again, I can write it as x which is x minus 2 into 7 minus x should be greater than or equal to 0. So what are the roots? Roots are 2 and 7. So I'll put it on number line. So this is 2, this is 7. Rightmost coefficient of x plus, coefficient of x minus. So plus into minus is minus. So minus, plus and minus I need greater than or equal to 0. So which is plus. So solution to this equation is value of x should lie between 2 and 7. So if the value of x lies between 2 and 7, then in that case mod of x minus 2 plus mod of x minus 7 will be 5. So this is how we solve these questions. Now the eighth property is, suppose I have to write mod of fx. So I can simply write mod of fx as minus fx whenever fx is less than 0. And I can write it as plus fx when fx is greater than or equal to 0. Now say for example, suppose I have to write mod of x cube minus 4x. So what I'll do is, I'll write this expression x cube minus 4x, I'll factorize it x into x square minus 4, x, x plus 2, x minus 2, I'll get the roots 0 minus 2 and plus 2, I'll put it on number line, minus 2, 0, and plus 2. Now what is the sign of the rightmost? Plus, plus, and plus. So which is plus, minus, plus, and minus. So now I can start writing the definition of this function. So definition is, when fx is negative, which is, when x is less than minus 2, or when x lies between 0 and 2, In this case, this expression is negative. So when fx is less than 0, it is minus fx. So what I'll do is, I'll simply take minus sign. So which is minus x cube minus 4x. 
Now, when fx is positive, it is simply fx. So that means when x is between minus 2 and 0 or when x is greater than 2, Now in this case, it's a positive sign, so I'll write plus. So this is simply x cubed minus 4x. So if I have to write mod of fx, I'll simply write it as minus fx when fx is negative and plus fx when fx is positive. I'll take up an example. Say for example, a function is defined as Now mod of x square minus 9 plus mod of x minus 2. So I'll solve this separately, which is x square minus 9. So roots are x plus 3, x minus 3. So this is minus 3 and this is plus 3 and it was just plus. So this is plus minus and plus. Now next one is x minus 2. So I'll also write x minus 2. Now definition changes at 2. So rightmost plus and this is minus. So x square minus 9, it will have a definition change at minus 3 and plus 3. And x minus 2, it will have a change in definition at 2. So I'll start writing the definitions in different intervals. Now interval number 1 is when x is less than minus 3. Now when x is less than minus 3, x square plus 9 is positive. So I'll write plus sign. So plus x square minus 9 and x minus 2, it is negative. So I'll write minus x minus 2. Now the second interval is when x lies between minus 3 and 2. Now between minus 3 and 2, this is minus and this is also minus. So I'll write minus x square minus 9 and minus x minus 2. And the third interval is between 2 and 3. Now between 2 and 3, first one is again minus, second one is plus. So I'll write minus x square minus 9 and then plus x minus 2. And finally, when x is greater than 3, so in this case, both of them, they are positive. So this is x square minus 9 plus x minus 2. So now because modulus function and polynomial functions, they are both continuous functions. So it doesn't matter where I'm taking an equality sign. So I can take equality sign either here or I may take it here. So at any point in the inequality, you may take this equality sign. Now I'll start writing this fx. So when x is less than minus 3, so it is x is square minus x now minus 9 plus 2 which is minus 7 when x lies between minus 3 and 2 now this is minus x square minus x plus 9 plus 2 which is plus 11 when x lies between 2 and 3 i'll get this as minus x square plus x 9 minus 2 which is 7 and when x is greater than or equal to 3 i'll get this as x square plus x minus 11. So this is how we can write definition of these functions. Now the ninth one is solution to the equation which are of the form mod fx equals gx. Now in all such cases what we'll do is we'll take two separate cases. Case 1 when fx is positive and case 2 when fx is negative. So when fx is positive I write mod fx as simply plus fx and when fx is negative I write mod fx as minus fx. Now suppose after solving the first case, I get some value. Suppose I get the value x equal to a. Now I need to check whether this value a, it satisfies the given condition. If it satisfies the condition, then x equal to a will be my answer. If x equal to a doesn't satisfy this condition, then I'll not choose this as my answer. So I'll take an example. Say for example, I need to solve x minus one mod of x square minus four x plus three plus two x square plus three x minus five equals zero. So I'll factorize it x minus 1 x minus 1 x minus 3 plus 2x plus 5 into x minus 1 equals to 0. I can take x minus 1 common and then I can write it as mod of x minus 1 x minus 3 
and then plus 2x plus 5 is equal to 0. So now I'll take this function which is mod of x minus 1, x minus 3. So this is 1 and this is 3. Right most is plus, minus and plus. So I need to take two separate cases. Case 1, when this x minus 1, x minus 3 is positive which is when x is less than or equal to 1 or when x is greater than or equal to 3. And the second case, when the value of x lies between 1 and 3. Now when x is less than or equal to 1 or x is greater than or equal to 3, this function is positive. So mod of fx is same as fx. So x minus 1 and then I'll write it as x minus 1, x minus 3 plus 2x plus 5, this is equals to 0. So I'll write x minus 1, I'll get x square minus 2x plus 8 equals to 0. So if I'll solve it, I'll get x equals to 1. And for this quadratic expression, I'll get no real roots. So I'll get this result as x equal to 1. Now I need to check whether this result it satisfies the given condition. So x equal to 1, it lies in this interval. So that means I'll choose this value. So this is x equals 1. Now when x lies between 1 and 3, this function takes a negative value. So in that case, mod fx will be minus fx. So I'll write this as x minus 1 minus x minus 1 x minus 3 and then 2x plus 5 is equal to 0. So I'll write this as x minus 1 minus x square plus 6x plus 2 equals to 0. So if I'll solve it, I'll get x equals to 1 and then x equals to minus 3 plus or minus under root of 11. So the three values are x is 1, x is minus 3, minus root 11 and x is minus 3 plus under root 11. Now x equal to 1, it doesn't lie in this interval, so I won't choose it. Now minus 3 minus root 11, obviously it is a negative value less than 1, again I won't choose it. Now what about minus 3 plus root 11? Now root 11 is 3 point something, so 3 point something minus 3, uh, 0 point something, again it doesn't lie in this interval. So the only solution to this equation is x equals to 1. So answer to this question is x is equal to 1. So this is how we solve such questions. So I'll take up another example. So the question is for a less than or equal to 0, determine all real roots of the equation x square minus 2a mod x minus a minus 3a square is equal to 0. So again I see a modulus sign. So which is mod of x minus a. So this is x minus a root is plus a. So rightmost is plus and then minus. So I'll take two separate cases. Now case one, when x is greater than or equal to a and case two, when x is less than. Now when x is greater than or equal to a, so in this case, this function is positive. So I'll have to take plus fx. So I'll write x square minus 2a, x minus a, minus 3a square equals 0. So I'll get this equation as x square minus 2ax minus a square equals to 0. So I'll get this as a plus minus root 2 and mod of a. Now because a is a negative number, I can write it as a into 1 minus plus under root 2. So the two values of x are x is a 1 plus root 2 or x is a into 1 minus root 2. Now in this case it says x should be greater than or equal to a. Now a is a negative number and 1 minus root 2 is also negative. So a into 1 minus root 2 will be a positive number. So positive number is always greater than a. So a into 1 minus root 2, it lies in this interval. So I'll choose a 1 minus root 2. Now what about a into 1 plus root 2? Now 1 plus root 2 is positive and a is a negative number. So product is negative 
and in this case 1 plus root 2 is greater than 1 so basically this value will be less than a so I won't choose this one so for the first case answer will be x should be a into 1 minus root 2 now for the second case I can write it as x square and then because it is negative so I'll take minus sign so minus and minus will be plus so 2a x minus a minus 3a square equals 0 so I'll get this as x square plus 2ax minus 5a square is equal to 0 so I'll get this as minus 2a plus minus 6. so minus a plus minus under root 6 and then minus a so here if I will take a common I will get a then minus 1 minus plus into root 6 so the two values here are x equals a into minus 1 minus root 6 and then x equals a minus 1 plus under root of 6 now minus 1 minus root 6 into a it's a positive value so it cannot be less than a and this a into root 6 minus 1 so a into root 6 minus 1 it's obviously a negative value and because minus 1 plus root 6 is greater than 1 so this value is less than a so I'll choose this one so answer to this question will be either the value of x should be a into 1 minus root 2 or value of x is a into minus 1 plus under root of 6. So this is how we solve these equations. So the question is solve the equation 2 to the power mod x plus 2 minus mod of 2 to the power x plus 1 minus 1 equals 2 to the power x plus 1 plus 1. So I see two modulus functions which is mod of x plus 2 and then mod of 2 to the power x plus 1 minus 1. So for this x plus 2 I know definition will change at minus 2 so this is plus and this is minus and for 2 to the power x plus 1 minus 1 so if I put it 0 I will get x is minus 1 so when x is greater than minus 1 this is plus and before that will be minus so I have to take three separate cases case 1 when x is less than minus 2 case 2 when x lies between minus 2 and minus 1 and third case when x is greater than or equal to minus 1. So now when x is less than minus 2, first one is negative and second one is also negative. So I'll write 2 to the power minus x plus 2 and then minus and minus will be plus. So if I'll solve it, I'll get I'll get x equals minus 3. Now minus 3, it lies in this interval. So it is included. Now for the second case, now first one x plus 2 between minus 2 and minus 1 will be positive and 2 to the power x plus 1 minus 1 will be negative. So I'll write this as 2 to the power x plus 2 and because this is negative, so minus and minus will be plus. So I'll get 2 to the power x plus 2 equals 2. I'll get x equals to minus 1. Now because minus 1 is not included, so I won't choose it. Now for the third case, when x is greater than or equal to minus 1, in this case, both the expression, they'll be positive. So I'll write it as 2 to the power x plus 2 minus 2 to the power x plus 1 minus 1. So I'll get this as a test 2 to the power x plus 2 is equal to 2 to the power x plus 2. Now this is always true. Now but this result it has come with the condition that x should be greater than or equal to minus 1. So it simply says so whenever x is greater than or equal to minus 1 then in that case this result will always be true. So from this answer I'll get is x belongs to minus 1 to infinite. So the solution to this equation is either 
the value of x is minus 3 or x lies between minus 1 and infinite. So this is how we solve these questions. Now the tenth one is property based inequalities. So let us choose a number. Say some number is a and a is a positive number which is greater than 0. Now I have four different cases. Case 1 when mod x is less than a. Case 2 when mod x is greater than a. Third case when mod x is less than minus a. And fourth case when mod x is greater than minus a. Now for the first case when mod x is less than a result is the value of x should lie between minus a and plus a. Now say for example suppose I get this condition which is mod of x is less than 2 I'll simply write it as x should lie between minus 2 and plus 2. Now for the second one when it says mod x is greater than a then the result will be either x is less than minus a or x is greater than plus a. So which is say for example mod of x is greater than or equal to 2. So I'll get this result as either x is less than minus 2 or x is greater than or equal to 2. Now third case is when mod of x is less than minus a. Now a is a positive number so minus a is negative. So mod this function is always positive and right hand side is negative. So positive number cannot be less than a negative number. So in this case there will be no solution. So for this one answer will always be x belongs to 5. And for the fourth one left hand side is positive right hand side is negative. So positive number is greater than negative number for all x belongs to r. So it will be true for all x belongs to r. So there are four separate cases when mod of x is less than a x lies between minus a and plus a mod of x greater than a either x is less than minus a or x is greater than plus a mod x less than minus a positive a positive number cannot be less than a negative number no solution and then mod x is greater than minus a so that is true for all x belongs to r there is one more case and which is suppose i have two positive numbers and suppose I have this mod of x lies between a and b then in this case the two result that I'll get is either x will lie between a and b or x will lie between minus b and minus a. Say for example if I'll say 1 is less than x mod x. So suppose I say mod x lies between 1 and 2 so here I can write either x will lie between 1 and 2 or x will lie between minus 2 and minus 1. So these are simple five properties which we'll use for property based inequalities. Say for example we need to solve this inequality which is mod of mod of x minus 2 minus 1 is less than equal to 5. Now the first inequality that I see is mod of x is less than a. So when mod of x is less than a then x lies between minus a and plus a. So I'll simply write minus 5 Now I'll add 1. Now for this first part, minus 4 is less than mod x minus 2. So which is third property. So a minus, so a negative number is always less than a positive number. So this is true for all x belongs to R. And for this one, again this is mod x less than a. So I'll write minus 6. x minus 2 is less than 6. So I'll add 2. So I'll get minus 4 and then x and then 8. So x belongs to minus 4 to 8. I'll take up another example. Say for example, mod of mod of 2x minus 1 plus 3 greater than 1. So here mod x is greater than a. So when mod x is greater than a then x is less than minus a or x is greater than plus a. So if I solve it I get 2x minus 1 is less than minus 4. A positive number cannot be less than a negative number. So I won't get anything from this.
So on left hand side I have a positive number and on right hand side I have a negative number. So a positive number is greater than negative number for all x belongs to R. So answer to this question is this is true for all x belongs to R. So let us take another example which is mod of mod of 2x minus 1 minus 3 is less than equal to 2. So again mod x is less than a. So I write minus a and then plus a. Now I write 3. Now this is mod x lies between a and b when a and b they are both positive. So I will write two separate cases. Case 1 when x lies between a and b and case 2 or second case in which x lies between minus b and minus a. So if I will solve it I will get, so I will add 1. So I will get 2. I'll divide by 2 and from this one if I add 1 I'll get minus 4 2x 0 I'll divide by 2 so either x should lie between minus 1 so either x should lie between 1 and 3 or it should lie between minus 2 and 0 so answer to this question is x belongs to so from minus 2 to 0 union 1, 2, 3. Now the next one is how to solve the modulus inequalities which are of the form mod fx is less than gx or mod fx greater than gx. Say for example mod of x square plus 3x plus x square plus 2 greater than or equal to 0. So in all these questions what we will do is we will take two separate cases. Case 1 when fx is positive and case 2 when fx is negative. So when fx is positive mod fx will be simply fx. And when fx is negative, it will be minus fx. So I'll solve the inequality. I'll take the intersection of these two conditions. Now again for the second one also, I'll do the same. And in the end, I'll take the union of these two conditions. So say for example, for this one, x square plus 3x. So this is x, x plus 3. So this is minus 3 and 0. So plus, minus and plus. So I'll take two separate cases. Case 1 when x is less than minus 3 or x is greater than 0 which is when this function is positive and second case when the value of x lies between minus 3 and 0. Now in the first case the value of this function is positive so if I remove more the sign I'll take plus so which is x squared plus 3x and plus x square minus 2 is greater than or equal to 0. So I'll write 2x square plus 3x minus 2 is greater than or equal to 0. So if I'll factorize, I'll get 2. So I'll take a number line, so which is minus 2. 1 by 2 rightmost plus. So plus, minus and plus. I need plus. So either the value of x is less than minus 2 or it is greater than 1 by 2. So then this result, it came with the condition and condition should be x should be less than or equal to minus 3 or x should be greater than or equal to 0. So I need to take the intersection of these two conditions. So what I'll do is on the same number line, I'll plot this one also. So x is less than minus 3 or x is greater than 0. Now these two conditions they have this interval which is common. So for the first part answer I'll get is x belongs to so from minus infinite to minus 3 union 1 by 2 to infinite. Now for the second part when x lies between minus 3 and 0 in this case this function is negative so I'll write minus sign so I'll write minus x square plus 3x plus x square minus 2 is greater than or equal to 0. So I'll get this is minus 3x minus 2 is greater than or equal to 0. So this is 3x is less than or equal to minus 2. x is less than minus 2 by 3. Now I need to take intersection of these two conditions. 
So I'll write this as minus 2 by 3 and x should be less than or equal to minus 2 by 3 and this condition is x should lie between minus 3 and 0. So the interval which is common to both is x belongs to from minus 3 to minus 2 by 3. Now I'll take the union of these two conditions. So I'll write it as x belongs to so from minus infinite to minus 3 and then from minus 3 to minus 2 by 3 and then union 1 by 2 to infinite. Now here minus 3 it is included here and it's connected so I can write it as x belongs to so minus infinite to minus 2 by 3 union 1 by 2 to infinite. So that is the answer to this question. Now another question is mod of x cube minus x is less than equal to x. So again I'll first solve this. So I'll take up two separate cases. Case 1 when this is positive which is when x lies between minus 1 and 0 or when x is greater than or equal to 1 and then case 2 when x is less than minus 1 or x lies between 0 and 1. Now for the first case this function is positive so I will simply write x cube minus x is less than x. So x cube minus 2x is less than or equal to 0 x and this is x square minus 2 is less than or equal to 0. So the roots are minus root 2 0 and plus root 2 so this is plus minus plus and minus I need less than or equal to 0. Now again this result it has come with the condition which is x should either lie between minus 1 and 0 or x should be greater than 1. So I'll take the intersection of these two conditions. Either x lies between minus 1 and 0 or x is greater than 1. So the, so the intersection of these two intervals is either the value of x is 0 or x lies between 1 and root 2. Now for the second part this value will be negative so I'll write minus x cube minus x should be less than or equal to x so if I'll solve I'll get minus x cube should be less than or equal to 0 or simply I can write x is greater than or equal to 0. Now this result again it has come with the condition which is either x is less than minus 1 or x lies between 0 and 1. So the interval which is common to both is x belongs to 0 to 1. So that means answer to this question will be x belongs to 0 union 0 to 1 union 1 to root 2. So here 0 is included and 1 is also included so I can simply write this as x belongs to 0 to root 2 and both 0 and root 2 they are included. Now the seventh transformation that we will study is how to draw the graph of linear modulus functions when they are added and subtracted together. So now first thing that we must keep in mind is this method is only applicable in the case of linear modulus function. So say for example a function fx is given as mod of x minus 1 minus mod x and then plus mod x plus 1 for x belongs to r. Now the general way of solving this question will be I'll take up different intervals when x is less than minus 1 when x lies between minus 1 and 0 between 0 and 1 and when x is greater than 1 
And for each of this interval, I'll write the definition of each modulus function separately and then I'll add them and subtract them accordingly. Now there is a direct method with which we can draw this graph. Now what I essentially know is in each of the interval, when I'll remove this mod sign, it will either have a plus sign or a minus sign. So in each of the interval, it will represent a portion of a straight line. So first I'll draw the axis. Now for mod of x minus 1, its definition changes at x equal to 1. The definition of mod x changes at x equal to 0. And the definition of x plus 1 changes at x equals to minus 1. So I'll mark these three points on x-axis. So I'll mark minus 1, I'll mark 0, and I'll mark plus 1. Now, I'll find the value at each of the three points. I'll find the value at minus 1. So if I'll put x as minus 1, I'll get f minus 1 equals to 1. If I'll put x as 0, I'll get this value as 2. And if I'll put x as 1, again, I'll get this value as 1. So I'll mark all the three points. So at minus 1, this value is 1. At 0, this value is 2. And at plus 1, this value is again 1. Now there is no definition chain between minus 1 and 0 and 0 and 1. So that means between minus 1 and 0, I'll join these two points and I'll draw the straight line. And again between 0 and 1, there is no change of definition. So again I'll join these two points and I'll draw this line. Now also when x is less than minus 1 or when x is greater than 1, there is no change in definition. So again, in these intervals, I'll take up a random point and then I'll mark its value, maybe at minus two. So if I'll put X is minus two, the value I'll get is three minus two, one, one plus one, two. And also at two, the value again will be two. So at minus two, this value is two. And at plus 2 also, this value is 2. So again, I'll join these two points. So that's the graph of this given function. So in each of the case, it is going to represent a portion of a straight line. So in order to draw a straight line, all I need to do is I need to just mark two points. So that's what I have done in this case. So in case of any linear modulus function with a plus or minus sign, this is the simplest way of solving it. Suppose if I have to find the range of this function, so the minimum value of this function is 1. So range of this function will be y belongs to from 1 to infinite. So let us take up another example. Now here fx is given by mod of x minus 2 plus mod of x plus 2 and minus 2 mod x when x belongs to r. Now for this one, definition of mod x minus 2 changes at 2. Definition of x plus 2 changes at minus 2 and definition of mod x changes at 0. So I'll draw the axis and I'll mark these points. Minus 2, 0, and plus 2. Now I'll also find the value at minus 2. So value at minus 2 will be 0, value at 0 will be 4, and value at plus 2, again it will be 0. So I'll mark all the three points. Now since there is no definition change between minus 2 and 0, I'll join these two points. For 0 and 2 also, I'll join these two points. Now when x is less than minus 2, I'll take any random point in this interval. Maybe I'll take f minus 3. So if I'll put x as minus 3, I'll get 0 again. And if I'll put x as 3, then again, I'll get this value as 0. So again, I'll draw the straight line. So the graph which I have drawn in black is the graph of this given function. Let me take another example. So suppose the function fx is x plus 1 plus mod x minus 1 minus mod x. Now for mod x minus 1, definition changes at 1 and for mod x definition changes at 0. Now I'll draw the axis and mark these two points. I'll find the value at 0. When x is 0, y is 2. So I'll mark the point. When x is 1, y is 1. 
So now I'll join these two points. I'll take up a point when x is less than zero. So when x is minus one, y is plus one. Again, I'll join these two points. And for this interval, when x is greater than plus one, again, I'll take up a point. Suppose I'll take x equals to two. I'll again get this value as two. So when x is two, y is two. So again, I'll join these two points. So that's the graph of the given function. Now another important fundamental in modulus function is use of graphs. So we can extensively use graphs to solve equations, to solve inequalities, to find the nature of functions. So I need to solve this inequality, which is mod of x square minus 2x plus mod x is less than or equal to 2. One way of doing it is by taking separate intervals and then solving it. Another way of solving it can be using graphs. So I can write this as, so this is mod of x square minus 2x is less than 2 minus mod x. So what I'll do is I'll draw the graph of y equals mod of x square minus 2x and I'll also draw the graph of y equals 2 minus mod x. Now because we have already studied graphs in the previous lectures, so I'll start with my basic graph. Basic graph here is x square minus 2x, so quadratic equation opening upwards, root set, root set 0 and 2. and then taking the transformation of mod fx. So reflection of down on up, and then erase the graph from third and fourth quadrant. So that is the graph of mod of x square minus 2x. Now what about this one? Basic graph here is y equals minus mod x, and then I'll shift the graph plus two units along y-axis. Now I'll draw both the graphs. So I'll solve the two equations and then I'll find their point of intersections. Now for this one, it is x square minus 2x and this is equals to 2 plus x. So this is x square minus 3x minus 2 equals to 0. Three plus minus and root seventeen by two. And because x is less than zero, so I'll take a negative number. So this point of intersection is x equals three minus under root seventeen by two. Now for this one, this is a reflected part, so I'll write minus x square minus two x. And then it will be intersected with this one, which is minus x plus 2. So there will be x square minus 3x plus 2 equals to 0. So point of intersection will be 1 and 2. Now I need to find the interval where mod of x square plus 2x is less than or equal to 2 minus mod x. So I need to find the interval where graph of this first function lies below the graph of second function. So the graph of first function lies below the graph of second function in this interval. So answer to this question will be x belongs to 3 minus root 17 by 2 to 1. Now there is also an equality sign. So these two values they are equal at 2. So I'll have to add this point also here union x equals to 2. So answer to this inequality will be value of x should either lie between 3 minus root 17 by 2 to 1 or the value of x is 2. I'll take up another example. 
Now the one question which I have come across many times is find the number of solutions of the equation mod log mod x equals mod sine pi x. So here we have to find number of solution to this equation. So first I will draw the graph of mod sine pi x. So for mod sine pi x my basic graph is y equals sine x. Now for sine pi x, I'll divide every value with pi. And then finally, I'll take the transformation of mod sine pi x. So transformation of mod fx is reflection of down on up. And then erase the graph from third and fourth quadrant. So I'll draw this graph. Now for mod log mod x, my basic graph is log x. Then I'll take the transformation of mod x. And then I'll take the transformation of mod log mod x. So now I'll draw the graph of mod log mod x. Now the value of log x is 1 at e and e is 2.7 something. So this graph will be drawn like this and in the same way on left hand side we are going to draw the same graph. So these two graphs they are intersecting at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10 points. So the number of solutions to this equation is 10. So the third example is fx equals minimum of mod x mod x minus 2 and 2 minus mod of x minus 1. So first I'll draw the graph of mod x. So that's the graph of y equals mod of x. Next I'll draw the graph of y equals mod of x minus 2. So it'll be the same graph of mod x but then I'll need to shift this graph plus 2 units along x axis. So that's the graph of y equals mod of x minus 2. So if I'll solve these two equations, their point of intersection will be x equals to 1. Now we'll come to our third graph. And our third graph is y equals 2 minus mod of x minus 1, which is y minus 2 minus mod x minus 1. My basic graph is y equals minus mod x and then I'll shift this graph to the point 1 comma 2. Now fx is minimum of the given functions. So I'll choose the function which lies below all the functions. First one I'll choose this. And then And I'll also find their points of intersection. So the graph of this function will be 2 minus mod x minus 1 when x is less than minus 1 between minus 1 and plus 1. This graph is mod x between plus 1 and 5 pi by 2. The graph is mod of x minus 2. And then again from 5 by 2 to infinite, this graph will be 2 minus mod of x minus 1. Thank you. Now we'll come to the very important transformations of modulus function. So from the graph of y equals to fx, I'll need to draw the graph of f mod x. I'll take a very simple example. Say for example, I need to draw the graph of y equals e to the power minus mod x. So I'll start with, I'll draw the graph of e to the power minus x, which is a decreasing function. So for this transformation, there are two steps. First step is erase the graph from second and third quadrant. So I'll draw the same graph, but I won't draw it in second and third quadrant. So this is first step. Now second step is place a mirror on y-axis. So place a mirror on y-axis and then take the reflection of right on left. So if I'll take the reflection of right on left, I'll get this graph. 
So that is the graph of y equals a to the power minus mod x. I'll take another one. Suppose I have to draw the graph of y equals x square minus 3 mod x plus 2. So basically, mod of x square is same as x square. So mod of x square minus 3 mod x and plus 2. So I can write it as mod of x minus 1 and mod of x minus 2. My basic graph is y equals x minus 1 into x minus 2, which is parabola opening upwards, roots at 1 and 2. So that's the graph of y equals x square minus 3x plus 2. Now I'll replace x with mod x. So my transformation is erase the graph from second and third quadrant and then take the reflection of right on left. So that is the graph of y equals x square minus 3 mod x plus 2. Now what about this? y equals ln mod x. So I'll draw the graph of y square to log x for the transformation. I'll erase the graph from second and third quadrant. So basically there is nothing in the second and third quadrant and then I'll take the reflection of right on left. So that is the graph of y equals log mod x. Now the ninth transformation is from the graph of y equals fx, I need to draw the graph of y equals mod fx. Now say for example, I have to draw the graph of y equals mod of sin x. Now for mod of sin x, my basic graph will be y equals sin x. So I'll draw the graph of y equals sin x. Now again there are two steps. First step is mirror on x axis and then take the reflection of down or up. So I'll place a mirror on x axis and I'll take the reflection of down on up. Then erase the graph from third and fourth quarter. So that is the graph of y equals mod sin x. I'll take another example. So I need to draw the graph of y equals mod of mod of x minus 1. Now there are two ways to draw this graph. The first way is I can draw the graph of mod x and then from mod x I can draw the graph of y minus 1 is equal to mod x and then I can draw the graph of mod of mod of x minus 1. So if I am going to draw the graph in this way then first I will draw the graph of y is equal to mod x then y minus 1 shift the entire graph minus 1 units along y axis and then mod of mod of x minus 1. Now for mod of mod of x minus 1 take the reflection of down on up and then it is the graph from third and fourth quadrant. So basically the graph of mod of mod of x minus 1 will be this W shape graph. So this question was actually asked in IIT. So what they have asked was find the points where this function is not differentiable. So it is not differentiable at minus 1, 0 and plus 1. It is continuous for all x belongs to R but not differentiable at minus 1, 0 and plus 1. Another way of drawing the same graph can be I can again start with y equals to mod x and then I can find out y equals mod of x minus 1 and then I can write mod of mod of x minus 1. So again I'll start with mod x then mod of x minus 1 shifting along x axis plus 1 units and then mod of x. So it is the graph from second and third quadrant and then take the reflection of right on left. So again I'll end up getting the same graph. So suppose I have to draw the graph of y equals mod of 2 upon mod of x plus 2 minus 1. So my basic graph here will be y equals 2 upon x and from here first I'll take transformation of mod x. So y equals 2 mod x and then I'll shift it along x axis 2 times mod of x plus 2 and then I'll shift it along y axis y plus 1 equals 2 times mod of x plus 2 and then finally I'll take mod of fx mod of 2 times mod of x plus 2 minus 1. So y equals 2 upon x rectangle or hyperbola. Then for mod x here is the graph from second and third quadrant take the reflection of right on left and then mod of x plus 2 shift the entire graph minus 2 units along x-axis 
and then y plus 1 and then y plus 1. Shift the entire graph minus 1 units along y axis. And finally, mod of fx. So, reflection of down on up and then erase the graph in third and fourth quadrant. The graph of y equals mod of 2 times mod of x plus 2 minus 1 will be So that's the graph of this given function. I'll take another example. Suppose I have to draw the graph of y equals mod of 8th power minus mod x minus half. So I'll start with y equals to 8th power minus x. And then first I'll draw the graph of 8th power minus mod of x. Then I'll shift it along y axis. y plus 2 equals 8th power minus mod x. And then I'll take the transformation of mod x. So mod of e to the power minus mod x minus 1 by 2. So for minus mod x, so erase the graph from second and third quadrant and take the reflection of right on left. Now for y plus 1 by 2, so shift the entire graph minus 1 by 2 units along y axis. So now the horizontal asymptote will be at minus 1 by 2 and the maximum value will be at plus 1 by 2. So in this equation, if I'll put y is 0, I'll get x equals plus or minus ln 2. So these point of intersections will be minus log 2 and plus log 2. Now I'll take the transformation of mod fx. So mirror on x-axis, reflection of down on up and then it is the graph from third and fourth quadrant. So basically this graph will be So that's the graph of mod of it is bar minus mod x minus 1 by 2. So our next transformation is to draw the graph of mod y equals to fx from y equals fx. Now for this, there are two steps again. It is the graph from third and fourth quadrant. Take a mirror on x axis and then take the reflection of up on down. Say for example, suppose I have to draw the graph of mod y equals x square minus 1. So my basic graph is y is equal to x square and then first I'll take transformation of y and then I'll take transformation of mod y. So y is equal to x square is a parabola opening upwards. Now y plus 1. So shift the entire graph minus 1 units along y axis and then for mod y it is the graph from third and fourth quadrant. So mirror on x-axis, take the reflection of up on down. So basically this graph will be I'll take for another example. Say for example I have to draw the graph of mod y equals mod of mod of x square minus 3 mod x and then plus 2. So I'll start with y equals x square minus 3x plus 2 and from this I'll draw the graph of y equals mod x square minus 3 mod x plus 2 and then from there I'll get y equals mod of mod of x square minus 3 mod x plus 2 and then from there I'll get mod of y equals mod of mod of x square minus 3 mod x and then plus 2. So basically it's a quadratic expression with two real roots. So I'll draw this graph. Now for the transformation of mod x, erase the graph from second and third quadrant and then take the reflection of right on left. So this is 1, 2 and this is minus 1 and minus 2 and this is 0, 2. Now for mod fx, Take the reflection of down on up. So mirror on x-axis and take the reflection. And then erase the graph from third and fourth quadrant. So I'll get this graph as. And now the next step mod y. So basically this graph will look like.
So that's the graph of mod y equals mod of mod of x square minus 3 mod x plus 2. Now what is a very important graph which is generally used in area and straight lines is graph of mod of x plus mod of y equals a. So here my basic graph will be x plus y equals to a and then I'll take the transformation of x, x plus y equals a and then I'll take the transformation of y also. So mod x plus mod y equals a. So let a be a positive number. I'll draw the line x plus y equals to a. So this point will be a comma zero and this point will be zero comma a. So for mod x, I'll erase the graph from second and third quadrant and then I'll take the reflection of right or left. Now for mod y, I'll erase the graph from third and fourth quadrant and then I'll take the reflection of up on down. mod x plus mod y plus a represents a square. Now the question is maximum of mod x mod y is less than 2 and mod of mod of x minus mod of y is greater than 1. I need to find the area enclosed by these two curves. We'll start with the first one and first one is maximum of mod x mod y is less than 2. So what I'll do is I'll draw the axis. I'll also draw y equals to x and y equals minus x lines. Now what we know is any point on these lines it is equidistant from x-axis and y-axis. That is distance from y-axis which is mod x and distance from x-axis which is mod y. So in this case mod x is equal to mod y. Now in this region if I take any point it will be closer to x than y. So this is your mod y and this is your mod x. So clearly mod y is less than mod of x. And in the same way for this region also it will be the same. Mod y is less than mod x. Now for any point in this region it will be closer to y than x. In this region mod x is less than mod y. And here again in this region mod x is less than mod y. Now the function says maximum of mod x and mod y should be less than 2. So that is here it should be mod of x less than 2. Here it should be mod of y less than 2. Here again mod of x less than 2. And here again it should be mod of y is less than 2. Now mod x less than 2 it means x should lie between minus 2 and plus 2. And mod y less than 2 means that y lies between minus 2 and plus 2. So I'll draw dotted lines at x equals minus 2 and x equals to 2 and y equals minus 2 and y equals 2. So now it will look like now for this region it is mod of x is less than 2. So that is x lies between minus 2 and plus 2. So the region I'll get is this small triangle. Now for this region again, I'll get x equals plus minus 2. So again, I'll get this one. For mod y less than 2, I'll get y lies between minus 2 and plus 2. And here again, I'll get y lies between minus 2 and plus 2. The region represented by this curve is the region inside this square. Now mod of mod of x minus mod of y greater than 1. I can write it as mod of x minus mod of y is greater than 1 or mod of x minus mod of y is less than minus 1. So I'll plot these two regions. So for the first one basic graph is x minus y is equal to 1. So I'll draw the graph. Y is 0, X is 1. X is 0, Y is 1. Now I'll take the transformation of mod X. Erase the graph from second and third quadrant. Take the reflection of right on left. And then I'll take the transformation of mod Y. Which is Erase the graph from third and fourth quadrant and take the reflection of up and down. 
Now I'll need to plot this inequality region. So what I'll do is I'll take origin and I'll put it there. So zero is greater than one, so which is incorrect. So that means the region represented by this curve is, so this inequality is represented by this shaded region. Now I'll come to next one, which is x minus y equals minus one. When x is zero, y is one. And when y is zero, x is minus one. I'll take the transformation of mod x. And then I'll take the transformation of mod y. Now for inequality again, I'll put the value of origin. So zero is less than minus one. So which again is incorrect. So again, the shaded region is going to represent this inequality. So the region bounded by this given inequality is So we need to find area bounded by given two curves. Now area bounded by first curve is area within this square and area bounded by the second curve is this area. So the area which is common to both is area which I have drawn in red. This is 1, 2, minus 1, minus 2, again 1 and 2, minus 1 and minus 2. Now each of this area is a small triangle. I can find the area of one triangle. So area of any triangle is given by half. Now base is 2 units and height is 1 unit. So this is 1. So each of this triangle is of area 1 square unit. So the area enclosed by these two curves is given by 4 square units. So the question is solve the equation mod of x minus x square minus 1 and that's equal to 2x minus 3 minus x square. So I look at minus x square plus x minus 1. Now the value of d for this is which is less than 0. So d less than 0 and a less than 0. So that means this quadratic expression is always negative. So clearly what I know is when a function fx is less than 0 then mod of fx is minus fx. So I can write it as minus x minus x square minus 1. Now what about the other expression? Now for this one also so this is 2x minus 3 minus x square. The value of d here is 4 minus 12, which is minus 8, which again is less than 0. So again, d less than 0 and a less than 0. So it clearly means this is always negative. Again, if I have to remove this mod, I like minus. So there'll be minus 2x minus 3 minus x square. So I can write it as x minus x square minus 1 and 2x minus 3 minus x square. So I'll cancel this. So what I'll get is I'll get x equals 2. So the only solution to this equation is x equals 2. So the question is find the number of real solutions of the equation mod of x minus 3 to the power 3x square minus 10x plus 3 is equal to 1. So I'll write the equation. So which is x minus 3 to the power 3x square minus 10x and then plus 3 is equal to 1. Now any equation of the form a to the power b equals to 1 then either a is 1 or b is 0 and a is unequal to 0. So now case 1 either mod of x minus 3 is equal to 1 in which case this is x minus 3 equals plus or minus 1 so which is x is either 2 or 4. Now the second case is when power is 0. So this is 3x square minus 10x plus 3 is equal to 0. So 3x minus 1, x minus 3 is equal to 0. So I get x as 1 by 3 and x equals to 3. But with that, I'll also need to check a is unequal to 0. So that means x should not be 3. So x cannot be 3. So the only solution I'll get here is x equals 1 by 3. So there are three solutions to this equation. x is either 2 or 4 or 1 by 3. So exactly 3. Now the question which is given is mod of x square plus x is less than 2. Now when mod x is less than a, x lies between minus a and plus a. Now I'll write two separate inequalities. Case 1. 
and so if I take it on the right hand side, I'll get x square plus x plus 2 is greater than 0. Now for this one, value of d is minus 7. Now d less than 0 and a greater than 0. So this is positive for all x belongs to r. So for, from the first case, the result I'll get is this is true for all x belongs to r. Now for the second one, rightmost is plus. I need minus not included now I need to take the intersection of these two conditions so the intersection of these two condition is x belongs to minus 2 to 1 so solution to this inequality is x belongs to minus 2 to 1 now the question is mod of 2 to the power x minus 1 plus 4 minus 2 to the power x is less than 3 now what I see in this question is if I'm going to add these two so I'll get 3 so if I write this as mod of A and this as B, so right hand side is essentially A plus B and says mod A plus mod B should be less than mod of A plus B. But we know that mod of A plus mod of B is always greater than the mod of A plus B. So what we know is these two conditions can simultaneously be true only if mod of A plus mod of B is equal to mod of A plus B in which case the condition I'll get is a into b should be greater than or equal to 0. So that means here I'll get this condition as 2 to the power x minus 1 into 4 minus 2 to the power x and this should be greater than or equal to 0. So I'll find roots. So x is 0 and x is 2. I'll put it on the number line. Sag up the rightmost. So this is minus plus and minus. I need greater than 0 which is plus. So answer to this question will be x belongs to included 0 to included 2. Now this question is mod of x upon x minus 1 plus mod of x is equal to x square upon x minus 1. So what I see is if I add these two x upon x minus 1 plus x. So what I'll get is x minus 1 into x square. So again I see this form mod a plus mod b is equal to mod of a plus b. So again here the condition will be a into b should be greater than or equal to 0. So I'll get x upon x minus 1 into x. It should be greater than or equal to 0. So this is x square upon x minus 1. It should be greater than or equal to 0. Now x square is always positive. So I can remove it from the inequality. Now 1 upon x minus 1 should be greater than or equal to 0. Root of the denominator is 1 rightmost it is plus and then minus I need greater than 0 so which is plus and because 1 lies in the denominator I won't include it now because we have removed x square and there is an equality sign so rule number 3 says I need to add roots of the expression in the final solution so I need to add x equals 0 also so either x is 0 or x lies between 1 and infinite now for this one, what I have mod of 1 plus 3 upon x is greater than 2. So when mod x is greater than a, then either x is less than minus a or x is greater than a. So if I'll solve this one, I'll get 3 upon x plus 3 is less than 0. If I take 3 common, I can write x plus 1 upon x should be less than 0. So this is minus 1 and 0. So this is plus, minus and plus. So it should lie between minus 1 and 0. And for this one, if I'll take it here, I'll get 3 upon x minus 1 should be greater than 0. So 3 minus x upon x is greater than 0. 0 and 3, rightmost is minus, minus, plus and minus. So here I'll get x should lie between 0 and 3. So because it is an OR sign, so answer to this question is x belongs to from minus 1 to 0 union 0 to 3 which will give me the value of a is minus 1 and the value of b is 3. Now the equation given here is mod x minus mod of 4 minus x minus 2x is equal to 4. First I will go with the inner mod which is mod of 4 minus x. Now for this one sign changes at 4. So this is minus and this is plus so I'll take two separate cases case 1 
when x is less than 4 and case 2 when x is greater than or equal to 4. Now when x is less than 4, 4 minus x is positive. So I can write x minus 4 minus x minus 2x is equal to 4. So I'll write it as mod of 2x minus 4 is equal to 2x plus 4 or mod of x minus 2 is equal to x plus 2. So again, I'll take two cases when x is less than 2, when x is greater than or equal to 2. So when x is less than 2, I'll get minus x minus 2 equals x plus 2. So I'll get this result as 2x equals to 0. I'll get x is equal to 0. Now when x is greater than or equal to 2, but less than 4, I'll write it as x minus 2 equals x plus 2. Here I won't get any solution. Now when x is greater than 4, now in that case it is negative, so I'll get mod of x minus minus will be plus so i'll get 4 minus 2x is equal to 4 i'll get x equal to 0 but x equal to 0 it doesn't lie in this interval so the only solution to this equation is x equals 0. the question is mod of mod of mod of x square minus x plus 4 minus 2 minus 3 is equal to x square plus x minus 12. now when i look at this x square minus x plus 4 what i know is the value of d for this is less than 0. So when d is less than 0 and a is greater than 0, it is always positive. So when fx is positive, mod fx is simply fx. So I can write this as mod of mod of x square minus x plus 4 minus 2 minus 3 equals x square plus x minus 12. Now this is mod of x square minus x plus 2 minus 3 and this is x square plus x minus 12. Now again for this x square minus x plus 2 value of d is 1 minus 8 which is again less than 0. A is again positive so it is again always positive so if fx is positive mod fx is simply fx so I can write it as x square minus x plus 2 minus 3 is equal to so which is x square minus x minus 1 is equal to x square plus x minus 12. Now I'll take this expression. x square minus x minus 1 roots are 1 plus minus under root 5 by 2. So which is 1 minus under root 5 by 2. 1 plus root 5 by 2. So this is plus minus and plus. So I'll take two separate cases. Case 1 when either x is less than 1 minus under root 5 by 2 or x is greater than 1 plus root 5 by 2. Now in this case this function is positive. So I can write x square minus x minus 1 equals x square plus x minus 12. I'll cancel x square. So I'll get 2x equals 11. I'll get x equals 11 by 2. Now 11 by 2 it lies in this interval. So this is one value of x. Now for the second part that is when x lies between 1 minus root 5 by 2 to 1 plus under root 5 by 2. Now this function is negative so I can write x square minus x minus 1 and this is x square plus x minus 12. So I can write it as 2x square equals to 13. So value of x is plus or minus under root 13 by 2. It doesn't lie in between this interval because x here is nearly between minus 0.62 to 1.62 so here I will not get any answer so the only answer possible in this case is value of x should be 11 by 2. For this question I need to find values of a for which the equation mod x minus 1 plus mod x minus 2 plus x minus a has two solutions so I can write this equation as mod of x minus 1 plus mod of x minus 2 plus x is equal to a now one way of doing it can be I can take three separate intervals x is less than 1 when x lies between 1 and 2 and when x is greater than 2 another way is using graphs so I'll solve this equation using graphs so I'll draw the graph of y equals mod of x minus 1 plus mod of x minus 2 plus x and I'll draw the graph of y equals a so we have already drawn such graphs in previous lectures so here definition changes at 1 and here definition changes at 2 so I'll draw the axis I'll find the values when x is 1, value of y is 2 and when x is 2, value of y is 3. So I'll mark these points. So when x is 1, 
y is 2 i'll join this portion of a straight line now i'll take another point when x is less than 1 so maybe i'll take 0 so when x is 0 y is 3 so i'll draw this portion of a straight line i'll take another point which is x equals to 3 y is 6 so i'll draw it it is given that this equation has two solutions so that means i need to draw the graph of y equals to a so that these two graphs they intersect at two points so if a is less than 2 then this line will lie below this graph so then there will be no point of intersection if a is 2 in that case there will be only one point of intersection now when a is greater than 2 then these two graphs they will intersect at two distinct points so then it will have two solutions so this equation will have two solutions when a is greater than 2 now for this question i need to find domain of this function so clearly there is a square root function so i'll write mod of x minus 3 2 minus mod x x x minus 2 and this should be greater than or equal to 0 now for this one roots are x equals plus or minus 3 for this expression roots are x equals plus or minus 2 for denominator will be x equal to 0 and x equal to 2 now because x equal to 2 features here and here at both the places so effectively there will be no sign change at 2 so what I'll do is, I'll plot these numbers on a number line. So this is minus 3, minus 2, 0, and then here it will be 3. Now what is the sign of the rightmost? So plus, minus, plus and plus will be minus. So minus, plus, minus, plus, and minus. Now what do I need? I need greater than or equal to 0. So I need plus. Now, because there is an equality sign, I have to include roots of the numerator. So, roots of the numerator are plus 3 and minus 3 and minus 2. And I have to exclude roots of the denominator. Roots of the denominator are 0 and then 2. So, answer to this question will be x belongs to, so from minus 3 to minus 2, union 0 to 2 union 2 to 3 now for the first question which is mod of x equals x square minus x minus 2 is less than 1 i'll take log both sides and i'll take log to any base which is greater than 1 maybe e now because at base e log is an increasing function so sign of inequality doesn't change so i'll take log and i can write it as x square minus x minus 2 into log mod x and this should be less than 0. Now product of x square minus x minus 2 into log x should be negative. So now I'll take two separate cases. Case 1 when x square minus x minus 2 is less than 0 and log mod x is greater than 0. And the second case when x square minus x minus 2 is positive but log mod x is negative. Now if I will solve this one I will get and from this one if I will take anti log I will get mod of x should be greater than 1 so which is either x is less than minus 1 or x is greater than 1. So if I will take the intersection of these two conditions I will get Either x is less than minus 1 or x is greater than 1. So the condition here is x belongs to 1 to 2. Now for the second case, x square minus x plus 2 greater than 0. We have already done that. So which is minus 1 and then 2 plus minus and plus less than minus 1 or greater than 2 not included. And log mod x less than 0. I will take anti log. So mod of x less than 1 x lies between minus 1 and plus 1. So in this case, if I take the intersection, there is no point which is common to both the conditions. So that means this condition will have no solution. Also, I will need to know the domain of this function which is x cannot be 0. So we don't have any problem with 0. So final answer to this inequality will be the value of x should lie between 1 and 2. 
Now for the second question, I'll take anti-log, so I'll write. Now, x square plus mod of x minus 5 is always positive, so I can cross multiply. I'll write x square minus 4x plus 3, and this is greater than x square plus mod of x minus 5. Now again, I see two modulus functions. So for this one, x square minus 4x roots are 0 and 4. So this is plus, minus and plus. And for this one, definition changes at 5, plus and minus. So I need to take three separate cases. Case 1, when x is less than 0 or x lies between 4 and 5. Case 2, when x lies between 0 and 4 and case 3 when x is greater than or equal to 5. Now when x is less than 0 or when x lies between 4 and 5 this expression is positive so I can write x square minus 4x plus 3 is greater than or equal to x square. Now what about x minus 5 it will be negative so minus x minus 5 so I cancel x so I'll cancel x square I can write 3x is less than minus 2, I'll get x is less than or equal to minus 2 by 3. Now x is less than minus 2 by 3, it lies in this interval. So that's my first solution. Now when x lies between 0 and 4, first expression is negative. So I'll get minus x square minus 4x plus 3 and this is greater than x square and here again will be negative. So minus x minus 5. So I'll get minus x square plus 4x plus 3 is greater than x square minus x plus 5. So if I'll take it on the right hand side, I'll get 2x square minus 5x and then plus 2, it should be less than 0. So I'll get 2x minus 1, x minus 2 should be less than or equal to 0. So this is 1 by 2 and then 2 plus minus and plus. I'll need what? I'll need minus less than or equal to 0. So which again lies in the given interval. So from the second case, the answer I'll get is x belongs to 1 by 2 and 2. Now, when x is greater than 5, so in that case, both the expressions, they are positive. So I can write it as x square minus 4x plus 3. And this is greater than x square plus x minus 5. So I'll cancel this one. So if I'll solve it, I'll get x is less than or equal to 8 by now this solution it doesn't lie in this interval so I'll discard it so answer to this question will be either x is less than or equal to minus 2 by 3 or x lies between 1 by 2 and 2 discuss the differentiability of the function y equals mod of 1 minus mod of 1 minus mod of 1 minus mod of 1 minus x. So we'll draw the graph of this function and from the graph we'll work out differentiability of this function. So my basic graph here is y equals 1 minus x which is a straight line. So when x is 0 y is 1 and when y is 0 x is 1. So that is the graph of y equals 1 minus x. Now I'll take the transformation of y equals mod fx. So mod of 1 minus x. Now transformation of mod fx is mirror on x-axis, take the reflection of down on up and then erase the graph from third and fourth quadrant. Now I'll take the transformation of y equals minus mod of 1 minus x. So transformation of minus fx is rotate the graph 180 degrees about x-axis. Now I'll take the transformation y minus 1 minus mod of 1 minus x. So I'll need to shift the graph plus 1 units along y-axis. Now next again. I'll take mod fx 
so which is 1 minus mod of 1 minus x Now again I take the transformation Then again I'll shift it Now again from here y equals mod of 1 minus mod of 1 minus mod of 1 minus x so minus 1 0 1 2 and 3 now we just need to do that one more time And then finally, transformation of another mode of x. So this is minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now it is continuous for x belongs to a, but it is not differentiable at these points. So, it is not differentiable at minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4. Now the question is solve mod of 2x minus 1 equals 3 times greatest negative function of x plus 2 times fractional part of x. Now we have modulus function, greatest negative function and fractional part function. So what I will do is, I will start with modulus function. I will take two separate cases. Case 1, when 2x minus 1 is positive and the second case, when 2x minus 1 is negative. So for the first case I know value of x should be greater than or equal to 1 by 2. So when x is greater than or equal to 1 by 2 this expression is positive and when x is positive mod x is simply x. So I'll write it as 2x minus 1 and this is 3 times greater function of x plus 2 times fractional part of x. So now I'll change this x back to greatest integer and fractional part. So I'll write 2 times greatest integer function of x plus 2 times Fractional part of x minus 1 is 3 times greatest linear function of x plus 2 times fractional part of x. So if I'll cancel it, I'll get this value as greatest linear function of x, it should be minus 1. So that is the value of x should lie between minus 1 and 0. But these values of x, they do not lie in this interval. So there is nothing common with the given condition. So in this case, there will be no solution. So from the first case, the answer I will get is x belongs to 5. Now, what about the second case? From the second case, when I know when the value of x is less than 1 by 2, in that case, when x is negative, mod x is minus x. So I'll write minus 2x minus 1 is equal to 3 times greater single function of 2 times fractional part of x. So again, I'll change x. So I'll write minus 2 greatest function of x, fraction part of x plus 1 and this is 3 times greatest linear function of x plus 2 times fraction part of x. So now I'll take fraction part of x. So I'll write 4 times fraction part of x is 1 minus 5 times greatest linear function of x that is fraction part of x is 1 minus 5 greatest linear function of x divided by 4. Now again we know this function is restricted its value will lie between 0 and 1. So 1 minus 5 greatest linear function of x by 4 will lie between 0 and 1. So it will be 0. 1 minus 5 greatest linear function of x and then 4. I will subtract 1 minus 1 minus 5 greatest linear function of x and there will be 3 if I will multiply it by minus 3. So minus 1 I will get minus 3 is less than 5 greater function of x is less than equal to 1 divided by 5. So minus 3 by 5 is less than greatest linear function of x is less than 1 by 5. So the only integral value possible in this case is the value of greatest linear function of x, it should be 0. 
Now if I'll put the value of greatest of function of x as 0, I'll get the value of fractional part of x as 1 by 4. So the value of x is 0 plus 1 by 4, that is 1 by 4. Now 1 by 4, it lies in the interval. So the only answer possible in this case is x equals 1 by 4. This is how we'll solve such questions. Now question number 18 is, we need to find number of real solution of this equation, which is mod of 2x minus greatest near function of x, it is equal to 4. So we can write this as 2x minus greatest interior function of x and it is equal to plus or minus 4. Now we'll take this first case, when it is plus 4, we'll get 2x minus greatest interior function of x and it is equal to plus 4. We can write x as greatest interior function of x plus fraction part of x, so it'll be 2 times fraction part of x minus greatest near function of x, it is equal to 4. So from here we'll get fraction part of x as 4 minus greatest near function of x divided by 2. Now we know that fractional part function, it always lies between 0 and 1. So we'll write 0 and this is 4 minus greatest near function of x upon 2 and it lies between 0 and 1. So it'll be 0 and then 4 minus greatest near function of x is less than 2 we'll get minus 4 and then greatest near function of x minus 2. So greatest near function of x should be greater than 2 but less than or equal to 4. So greatest near function it can only take integral values. So the only integral value possible in this case is either this value is 3 or greatest near function of x is 4. Now we'll take greatest near function of x as 3 then we'll get fraction part of x is 1 by 2. Now in this case, value of x is 3 plus 1 by 2. That should be 7 by 2. And if greater function of x is 4, fraction part of x is 0. Here, the value of x is simply 4. Now we'll consider the second case. Now here again, we can write 2 times greatest near function of x plus 2 times fraction part of x minus greatest near function of x is equal to minus 4. We'll get 2 times fraction part of x as minus greatest near function of x plus 4. Now again, it will lie between 0 and 1, so it will be 0 and then minus greatest near function of x plus 4 divided by 2 and it should be less than 1. So we can write minus 2 is less than greatest near function of x plus 4 is less than equal to 0. So here we will get minus 6 is less than greatest near function of x is less than minus 4. So here the two values of greatest near function x possible are minus 4 and minus 5. So we'll get two solutions here and two solutions here. So total number of solution to this equation is 4 and that's your option number A. Now here the question is number of integers x satisfying this equation which is sin inverse mod of x minus 2 plus cos inverse 1 minus 3 minus x is equal to pi by 2. Now this is only possible if it is identity and it is identity when sin inverse x plus cos inverse x is pi by 2. So this is true when x minus 2 is equal to 1 minus mod of 3 minus x which we can write as mod of x minus 2 plus mod of 3 minus x and it is equal to 1 and we can also express this as mod of x minus 2 plus 3 minus x and it'll be x minus 2 plus 3 minus x. Now this is nothing but mod a plus mod b and it is equal to mod of a plus b which is true if and only if a and b they are of the same sign. So that means a and b should be greater than or equal to 0. So the condition that we'll get from here is x minus 2 into 3 minus x it should be greater than or equal to 0. So there are two critical points 2 and 3. This is minus plus and minus. So this is true when the value of x lies between 2 and 3. Now we need to find integral values of x. So there are two integral values of x x equals 2 and x equals 3. Now we'll put x equals 2 it will be sin inverse 0 and here it will be cos inverse 0 which lies in the domain and if we'll put x as 3, it'll be sin inverse 1. And here it'll be cos inverse 1, which again lies in its domain. So there are two integral values of x possible and they are x equals 2 and x equals 3. So number of integers is simply 2 and that's your option B. 
Now question number 40, it says for a greater than b greater than c greater than 0, the minimum value of this function, which is fx mod x minus a plus mod x minus b plus mod x minus c is. Now, if we look at this expression, this is nothing but this is deviation of x from these three given numbers a, b and c. And we know that mean deviation about median is the minimum. So this function fx will assume its minimum value at the median of the series, which is a, b and c. Now, since a, b, c, they are arranged in descending order, its median will be b. So this function f will have minimum value when the value of x is b. So we can write this as mod of b minus a plus 0 plus mod of b minus c. Now since b is less than a, so this one is a minus b and here we can write this as b minus c. So its value simply will be a minus c. So the minimum value of this function will be a minus c and that's your option number d. So now the question is function fx is given as 1 upon greatest name function of mod of x minus 1 plus greater function of mod of 12 minus x minus 11 and I need to find the domain of this function. So the only restriction that I see in this question is denominator should not be 0. So I need to solve this equation which is greater function of mod of x minus 1 plus greater function of 12 minus x and minus 11 and it should not be equal to 0. Now what I'll do is I'll take three separate cases. Case 1 when x is less than 1, case 2, when x lies between 1 and 12, and the third case, when x is greater than 12. Now for the first case, when x is less than 1, so I know that this x minus 1, its value changes at 1, so this is plus and this is minus, and for the next one, 12 minus x, so this is minus and this is plus. So first expression will be negative, so it will be minus x plus 1, and then it'll be 12 minus x will be positive. So there'll be 12 minus x and then minus 11 and it should not be 0. So I can write it as greater function of minus x plus 1 and plus 12 plus greatest new function of minus x and then minus 11. It should not be 0. So 2 times greatest new function of minus x and then plus 2 should not be equal to 0. So that is greatest new function of minus x should not be minus 1. So get a function of x. So minus x should not be minus 1 simply means minus x should not belong to minus 1 comma 0. If I multiply with minus I get x should not lie between 0 and 1. So the value of x should not lie between 0 and 1. Now what about the second case? Now in the second case both of them they are positive. So I'll write greater than function of x minus 1 plus greater function of 12 minus x minus 11 is unequal to 0. So here I'll get greater function of x minus 1 plus 12 plus greater function of minus x minus 11 is unequal to 0. So here 11 and 11 will cancel. So I'll get greater single function of x plus greater function of minus x should not be equal to 0. So I know that greater function of x plus greater function of minus x is 0 where x is an integer. And here it is non-zero when x is not an integer. So that means here it should be the value of x should not be an integer. So from the first case, I'll get x should be less than 1 but should not lie between 0 and 1. So from here I can say the value of x is simply less than or equal to 0. Here I'll get all the values of x between 1 and 12 except all the integral values that is 1, 2, 3, 4 up to 12 and for the third case when x is greater than 12 so this is positive and this is negative so I'll write x minus 1 plus x minus 12 and minus 11 should not be equal to 0 so I can write 2 times greater function of x so minus 1 minus 12 minus 13 so minus 13 and minus 11 so there will be minus 24 so there will be minus 24 greatest in the function of x should not be equal to 12. So that is x should not belong to 12 to 13. So here x should be greater than 12 but should not be equal to 12 and 13. So the result I'll get is the value of x should lie between 13 to 
infinite. So answer to this question is either the value of x is less than 0, x belongs to minus infinite to 0, 0 included, union 1 to 12 except z union 13 to infinite. So that is the answer to this question. So now the question is function fx is given as 1 upon greatest name function of mod of x minus 1 plus greater function of mod of 12 minus x minus 11 and I need to find the domain of this function. So the only restriction that I see in this question is denominator should not be 0. So I need to solve this equation which is greater function of mod of x minus 1 plus greater function of 12 minus x and minus 11 and it should not be equal to 0. Now what I'll do is I'll take three separate cases case 1 when x is less than 1, case 2 when x lies between 1 and 12 and the third case when x is greater than 12. Now for the first case when x is less than 1 so I know that this x minus 1 its value changes at 1 so this is plus and this is minus and for the next one 12 minus x so this is minus and this is plus. So first expression will be negative so it will be minus x plus 1 and then it will be 12 minus x will be positive so there will be 12 minus x and then minus 11 and it should not be 0. So I can write it as get a function of minus x plus 1 and plus 12 plus greatest new function of minus x and then minus 11 it should not be 0. So 2 times greatest new function of minus x and then plus 2 should not be equal to 0. So that is greatest new function of minus x should not be minus 1. So get a function of x so minus x should not be minus 1 simply means minus x should not belong to minus 1 comma 0. If I multiply with minus I get x should not lie between 0 and 1. So the value of x should not lie between 0 and 1. Now what about the second case? Now in the second case both of them they are positive. So I will write greater than function of x minus 1 plus greater function of 12 minus x minus 11 is unequal to 0. So here I will get greater function of x minus 1 plus 12 plus greater function of minus x minus 11 is unequal to 0. So here 11 and 11 will cancel. So I will get greater single function of x plus greater function of minus x should not be equal to 0. So I know that greater function of x plus greater function of minus x is 0 when x is an integer and here it is non-zero when x is not an integer. So that means here it should be the value of x should not be an integer. So from the first case I will get x should be less than 1 but should not lie between 0 and 1. So from here I can say the value of x is simply less than or equal to 0. Here I will get all the values of x between 1 and 12 except all the integral values that is 1, 2, 3, 4 up to 12 and for the third case when x is greater than 12 so this is positive and this is negative so I will write x minus 1 plus x minus 12 and minus 11 should not be equal to 0 so I can write 2 times greater function of x so minus 1 minus 12 minus 13 so minus 13 and minus 11 so there will be minus 24 so there will be minus 24 greatest in the function of x should not be equal to 12 so that is x should not belong to 12 to 13 so here x should be greater than 12 but should not be equal to 12 and 13 so the result I'll get is the value of x should lie between 13 to infinite so answer to this question is either the value of x is less than 0 x belongs to minus infinite to 0 0 included union 1 to 12 except z union 13 to infinite. So that is the answer to this question. I can write fx as x plus under root of minus x when x is less than 0 and x plus under root of x when x is greater than or equal to 0. So if I differentiate this function I will get Now this function is not differentiable at 
x equal to zero. So x equal to zero is one of my critical point. And also, if I'll put f dash x equals to zero, I'll get x equals minus one by four. So there are two critical points, x equal to zero and x equals minus one by four. So I'll put them on a number line. So rightmost it is plus, then minus, and then plus. So it'll be increasing when x is less than minus one by four, decreasing between minus four and zero, and then again increasing when x is greater than zero. At minus one by four, it'll be a point of local maximum, and zero is a point of local minimum. The value at minus one by four is one by four, and the value at zero is zero. I'll also find limits. Limit x tends to minus infinite f x will be minus infinite. Limit x tends to infinite f x is plus infinite. So I'll mark these two points zero and minus one by four. So at zero it is zero, and at minus one by four it is plus one by four, and so local maxima. If I'll put f x is zero, I'll get x equals minus one. So it'll pass through minus one. So its graph will be starting from minus infinite. It'll take local maximum at minus one by four. At zero, it is not differentiable. So that is the graph of x plus. Under root of mod x. Now the fourth question is: Draw the graph of y equals x square into e to the power minus mod x. Now for this function, first I'll find domain. So there is no restriction in the function. So domain obviously is x belongs to R. If I replace x with minus x, I'll get, which means this graph has a y-axis symmetry. Now the third thing is we need to discuss its continuity and differentiability. Now it is continuous and differentiable in x belongs to R. Actually, I need to check the differentiability at zero because we do have mod of x. But then, when you'll find left hand derivative and right hand derivative, you'll find that it is differentiable at x equal to zero. Now the fourth step is to find points of intersection. So if I put x as zero, I'll get y equals zero, and there is no other point of intersection. So the only point where it will intersect x is zero comma zero. Now because this graph has a y-axis symmetry, so what I'll do is I'll draw the graph when x is greater than equal to zero, and then I'll replicate the same graph on the left hand side. I'll write this function as y equals x square e to the power minus x when x is greater than or equal to zero. I'll find d by by dx. So if I differentiate the function, I'll get dy by dx is e to the power minus x, two minus x, and plus x. So the critical points are zero and two. So zero, and then it's two. Rightmost it is minus. So this is minus, and this is plus. So between zero and two, this function it will increase, and from two to infinite it will decrease. Now at zero, it will have Local minima, and at two, this function will have local maxima. I'll also find this value. So now, if I put x as zero, I'll get y as zero, and if I put x as two, I'll get y as four into e to the power minus two. Now I'll find the limits also. Now because I'm taking the reflection of right on left. I'll just need to find one limit, which is limit x tends to infinite. So I identify the form infinite e to the power minus infinite is zero, which is an indeterminate form. So I'll write it as x square upon e to the power x, which is infinity upon infinity form. So if I differentiate it twice, I'll get this limit as zero. So now I'll draw my graph. So it'll intersect x-axis and y-axis at origin, local minima at zero, minimum value zero, then at two, maximum value. Four upon e square, and then at infinite it will be zero. So I'll draw this graph. And now, because it is symmetric about y-axis, I'll take the reflection of right on left. So that is the graph of y equals x square 
into yield power minus mod x. Now the question is log under root x plus mod of under root x minus 1 to the base 3 is equal to log 4 under root x minus 3 plus 4 mod of under root x minus 1 and here the base is 9. So first what I'll do is I'll write this base 9 as 3 square. And then I'll use the property of base. So if I'll take this 2 out, then it'll be 1 by 2. So I can write log under root x plus mod of under root x minus 1 is equal to 1 by 2 log to the base 3. And this is 4 under root x minus 3 plus 4 mod of under root x minus 1. Now I'll take this 2 on left hand side and I'll take this 2 to the power of this log. So I can write this log under root x plus mod of under root x minus 1 whole square and this is log 4 under root x minus 3 plus 4 times mod of under root x minus 1. Now I can cancel log with log so I'll get this as under root x plus mod of under root x minus 1 whole square and this is 4 under root x minus 3 plus 4 times mod of under root x minus 1. Now I'll take two separate cases. Case 1 when x lies between 0 and 1. When x lies between 0 and 1, then in that case, under root of mod x minus 1 is simply 1 minus under root of x. So I can write it as under root x plus 1 minus under root x whole square. And this is 4 under root x minus 3 and plus 4. And it is 1 minus under root of x. So under root x will cancel. Here also, root 4x and root 4x will cancel. So I'll get this result as 1 is equal to 1. And this is true for all x belongs to R. But then this result, it has come with the condition, which is x should lie between 0 and 1. So from the first case, the answer I'll get is x should lie between 0 and 1. Now for the second case, when x is actually greater than 1, in that case, mod of under root of x minus 1 is equal to under root of x minus 1. So now I can write it as under root x plus under root x minus 1 whole square. And this is 4 under root x minus 3 plus 4 under root x minus 4. So I'll get this as twice under root x minus 1 whole square. And this is 8 under root x minus 7. So there will be 4 under root x whole square plus 1 minus 4 under root x. And this is 8 under root x minus 7. So I'll get this equation as 4 under root x whole square minus 12 under root x. And then plus 8 equals to 0. So if I will divide by 4, so I'll get this as under root x whole square minus 3 under root x and plus 2 equals 0. Now, which is a quadratic equation in under root x. So, I can simply take under root x as y. So, I can simply take under root x as y. So, I can write as let under root x equals y. So, this is y square minus 3y plus 2 equals to 0. So, that is value of y is either 1 or value of y is 2. So that is under root of x is either 1 or under root of x is 2. So x is either 1, x is equal to 4. Now x equal to 1, it doesn't lie in this interval. So the only solution possible in this case is x equals to 4. So answer to this question is either the value of x lies between 0 and 1 or the value of x is 4.